Welcome to Frank's School. I, I've got a helper here today, I guess. Um, sorry about the focus yesterday. Uh, this is the 49th day. Uh, that focus. I, I wonder if it was because I had that bright blue shirt on. Uh, I, I decided I'll leave everything else the same to see if that was what the issue was. It seemed like the camera was struggling, not knowing what to do with that bright blue shirt. Uh, I wore that uh, sort of by request, actually. Uh, uh, there was the comment, uh, that, do I only have uh, red shirts? So I don't know, we'll see. A anyway, if you want to know badly enough what I'm talking about, you can understand it. It's pretty hard to read what's on the board. <clears throat> I thought about redoing it, but I, I don't think I will. Uh, well, going on, uh, here's where I'd ask you to start the third out of seven parts to this ninth episode, the last. At that uh, first minute, 30 second, where he, he leaves Africa and comes to the Caribbean, really, and, and he's going to talk about Caribbean Creole. I always get mixed up whether there's two Bs or one there. Uh, sometimes you, you'll hear that word patois uh, come up again, uh, meaning, uh, you know, uh, not standard. We, we, you can begin to see the politics getting involved here a little bit. Uh, you'll be to the island of Barbados, and I write these down because you could pursue these uh, as, a, as a guide if you're working with homeschoolers or in a classroom. Notice the windmill. <laughs> you know, you think, windmill? Well, that's <clears throat> isn't that Holland? No, no, no. Windmills are all over the world. That's a great source of power. Uh, so they don't say anything about it, but, but they, you get a good look at it. Barbadian, I'm not sure if that's how you, there might be an I here. Of course, I could always spell it my way, Barbadian. You know, when I hear something like that, <coughs> oh. Barbadian, uh, if I have to spell it, I, I, I jump to my spelling system, Barbadian. Um, but anyway, uh, it, and sometimes Barbadian English or just Barbadian or Barbadian Creole maybe. Uh, one of the things I had a memory of, I'll share with you, when the guy's getting uh, driving his truck and the fellow's in the back holding on to the back of the truck, I had this stark memory of these stevedores, they were called in, in Recife, uh, Brazil. Well, that, that was Portuguese. Recife, Brazil, <coughs> which is a port. And when I was in the Peace Corps, I used to go there a lot. And the dock workers, that's what a stevedore is, they would unload, oh, it was wheat, probably sacks of wheat. And load too uh, at the docks. You know everything wasn't mechanized uh, all day. They would take a sack of probably probably 50 kilos. Might have been 50 kilos, which would be 120 pounds. Ooh, maybe it wasn't quite that much. Put them on their heads and carry them, and then load them onto trucks. Take them out of the docks and load them onto trucks, and then ride with the truck to where they were gonna unload those sacks in an armazen, they called it a uh, warehouse, uh, to be sold. And these guys were massive, because that was what they did all the time. And they were so poor, and they were dressed in rags. And when the wind would, uh, when they'd ride after, you know, their resting time was from the dock to wherever the armazen was, and they'd stand there with the wind blowing to cool them off, and the wind would blow these rags back uh, past these unbelievable male bodies. And, and I used to think, well, what would Michelangelo, Michelangelo would have a field trip there because these guys were such incredible physical specimens. Well, anyway, that guy, the older guy riding, he, he wasn't like that, but uh, boy, I remembered. I, I, in my mind, I think I took snapshots of that different times because they were just so spectacular uh, in, in artistic terms. Well, that was a memory. Uh, cane cutting, you'll see sugar cane. I mean, lots of everybody seems like they love sh sugar, too much so. And, and if you ever wondered, well, where sugar come from? Well, you can see what cane cutting is like. And uh, there's a, they're sitting under a big ficus tree. You can see the uh, uh, buttress roots uh, all coming down uh, before it starts to rain. I just pa pass this on because uh, part of me is at heart a, a botanist. And the banana plants, you'll see those real long leaves, those are, <coughs> those are banana plants. Uh, reggae music is mentioned, reggae music got so popular, uh, it didn't carry me, I never, I listened to it some, but I, I never got so I loved it, but, uh, and Jamaica, and this, so he's going t from, to different islands, uh, different island now, Jamaica and Jamaican English, or plain Jamaican, or Jamaican Creole, and the one man is going to talk about a nation language. There is that politics that I said you can begin to hear. 
The whole name of this is next year's words, a look into the future. Where is English going? And he, uh, that's where he opened, really, with a dramatic statement. Uh, and he, he's touching on, well, you've seen it throughout. There's a certain pride in your own self and your own culture and your own uh, area, neighborhood, w with your language. And, uh, you know, I thought to myself, decentralism, there it is. Uh, you know, elsewhere in my course, I, last year, I, I, prob I probably got way too political, but I, I figured I needed to, to be uh, honest. Decentralist. There is something decentralizing about using a language which is not the standard uh, politically enabling, I think he said earlier. Well, uh, th this isn't too much, and I'm not asking you to go all that far, and I'm not sure then if tomorrow we'll finish it or not, but it seemed like a good place to stop when, when he goes to Britain uh, because of all the uh, a emigrants that, that came from those islands to Britain. So, we're real close to the end. I hope the focus is better today. See you tomorrow.